What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be setting up and installing R in our studio. Now this is our very first lesson in this series, so we're just gonna be installing and getting R in our studio set up. In future lessons, we're gonna be diving into the basics of R. We'll be grouping, aggregating, visualizing, cleaning, and a ton of other things using a lot of different packages that are very popular within R. By the end of this series, you should feel very comfortable using R and R Studio. If you haven't checked it out already, I have a full course called R for Data Analysis over on analystbuilder.com. I will leave a link in the description as well as a coupon code if you wanna take that full course. It covers more topics, has practice problems throughout the course, as well as goes more in depth and has more difficult projects. With all that being said, I'm super excited to get started on this series with you. Let's jump on my screen and get started. All right, so let's get started in downloading our studio. Now, our studio is created by a company called Posit. Now, R is the programming language, but our studio is the interface in which so many people interact with R. And so we're going to be using our studio throughout this entire series. What we need to do is first install R, and then next we need to install our studio. R is going to be installed almost the exact same way on every system. And then for installing our studio, it's going to auto populate this for Windows because it recognizes Windows as my machine. But if it doesn't, if it gets the wrong one, you go down here for uh, Linux, you know, Mac, Windows, whichever one that you want. So let's get started by installing R on our machine. I went ahead and deleted R and R Studio from my computer. So I'm starting fresh just like you. We're going to come right here. I'm going to do download R for Windows, but if you have a different type of machine, be sure to get the correct one. I'm going to download R for Windows, and then I'm going to come up here and say install R for the first time, and then we're going to get this package right here. So let's go ahead and click on this, and I'm going to go ahead and download it. Now that it's done downloading, I'm going to go ahead and open that .exe file. You may not be able to see it, but it just says, are you sure you want to download this? And I'm going to say yes. Now we need to set up our language. I'm going to choose English, but go ahead and choose the correct language for you. I'm going to click OK. We're going to click Next. And now we're just saying where it's actually going to be placed. So I, by default, it gets placed in my C drive under program files. That is where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. You can select your components. We want all of them uh, just by default. And then it asks if you want to have this, you know, boot up on startup. I'm going to say no because I don't need it all the time when I'm, you know, restarting my computer. And then you can name this as well. I'm just going to keep it as R. Again, I don't really need a desktop shortcut or a quick launch shortcut. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And now it's going to install on our computer. And that took about 30 seconds and we now have R on our computer, which means we can come back here and we can install our studio desktop for Windows. Again, make sure you have the right one for your operating system. I'm going to go ahead and click on this and we are going to save this. Now that it's done downloading, let's go ahead and open it up. Now we're going to set up and install our R studio. Let's go ahead and click next. We're just selecting our location. Make sure you have enough space required. It's very small, but that's happened to me in the past where I have no storage, and then it doesn't really work. So let's go ahead and install this. It's gonna install. Again, this should only take about a minute or so. Now that our studio is completely set up, let's go ahead and click finish. And now we're gonna go look for it. So we're gonna come right over here. We're gonna say our studio, and we're gonna open up our studio. It says we need to choose our R installation because R Studio requires an existing installation of R. We're going to go ahead and choose the default one. We're going to click OK. And now R Studio from Bosit is popping up for us. And just like that, we are in R Studio. And now we have our user interface that we can take a look at. So really quickly, let's take a look at what we have here. Right over here, we have our console, our terminal, our background jobs, but this is our console. If you are looking for uh, where you can write code, it's going to be right here. We just need to click on this R script and it pulls up our coding workspace right up here. Now this is where we can uh, start typing. We can bring things in like reading in a library or a package and we can write all of our code in here. Down here is our console. So when we execute code, this will be where we get error messages or we can see the output of our code. On this right hand side, we have our environment. Now this is where if we uh, pull in some type of data frame or if we create variables or lots of other things that we're gonna be doing throughout this series, they will show up right over here. And lastly, in this section on the bottom, you can actually come in here and we can select a file path to give it. So let's come in here, let's go to our YouTube and uh, this is gonna be our R series. So I'm gonna open up our R series. 
We don't have any files in here just yet, but I'll have access to our files where we can then pull them in or read them in. And it's really great that RStudio has this because you use a lot of files when you're working within RStudio. This is absolutely something we will use quite a bit. We, if we come right over here, actually, we can do Control S and we can save this. Let's go down to our YouTube and I'm gonna go to this R series and I'm just gonna save this as first file. And if I save it, you'll see it saves as first file dot R. Now that's actually not a good naming convention. I should use an underscore there, but these are all things that we will get to uh, within this series. Now that we have everything set up, we can keep going in this series moving forward. We're gonna learn a ton of different things. But with that being said, I hope that this is helpful. I hope you were able to get everything set up and I will see you in the next lesson.